All right, going live in three, two, one. And I believe that we should be live now. All right. Hello, everybody. We are live with uh, it's amazing. Room Curran is driving. Studio. I'm driving here. We got EJ in the house. And uh, Hello. this is hopefully going to be a more of an interactive discussion. So I think there are ways, if you're listening in on YouTube, you can join the audio and chat with us in real time. And that, that would be a cool part of this session, maybe towards the end. But uh, to kick us off, I can sort of do a, a short presentation on what VizHub is, where it's at, and maybe how it could be useful. And uh, feel free to interrupt yeah, me I'm, and I'm ask questions. Yeah, I'm going to have lots of questions yeah. along the way, I think, if you can have patience with that. Yes, I am totally open to questions. This is why I'm doing this, uh, to get feedback, to get questions, um, to understand the desires of potential users and potential customers um, and just make Can it you, better. I, I actually don't know the answer to this. Like, What what was the first seed of VizHub? Like, oh, when love did it. you do the first commit or like, what was the first day of creating it? Love it. Well, if actually I wanted to, before this, I wanted to find some screenshots of the early versions. Um, there's been like, there's been three big versions and they're all based on the courses that I've taught with Worcester Polytechnic Institute over the years. And in the VizHub forum, there's a link to all of these. And it all started when I was back in San Francisco in like 2015. So welcome everyone. And this is um, the first custom tool I built for teaching, which lets you just skip through these really short D3 examples. And then I went down this rabbit hole of like, can I make this thing editable? Because originally it was just a bunch of slides, essentially, with code examples that run. And I'm like, I want to make this editable. It's like a teaching tool. And then I want my students to be able to edit this code. So it's really easy to step into coding and start playing around without those barriers to entry of like setting up a local development environment, uh, getting Git going, installing Node, and all that stuff. And so it really started as a teaching tool, like Data Visualization Course 2018. Here are a bunch of videos and, and examples where it's like line charts and maps and stuff um, with pure D3. And if we take a look at some of these, this is an earlier version of the VizHub editor in use here. Yeah, check this out. This is version one. Huh. And what uh, year is this? Twenty eighteen. Nice. So this is <laughs> it looks so almost like uh like clownish looking back. But what I wanted to do is like emulate my experience of using Vim in Ubuntu, which mm. is my preferred place to develop and I get into like a Zen mode. And so I even copied the, the font and the, the styles and everything from Vim <laughs> and just made it work in the browser. And so the so idea you're mostly building a tool for yourself. Yeah. At this point. And it's, it's, it all started because I was using block builder, which Ian Johnson's amazing tool for editing things that were on blocks.org as GitHub gists, right. which is all vanilla JavaScript and HTML. And the problem that I ran into with that is that I really wanted to use ES modules, which at the, at the time, like what, 20, was this even before, I don't know, 2018? I'm like, we cannot be doing development without using JavaScript modules. So I'm like, I'm just going to build yeah. my own system that supports ES modules. And that's sort of the core of the C. You can import, even in this version, you can import from local files. Like import color legend from color legend. Yeah, and you're importing like the sub parts of D3, right? Like exactly. You're not importing the whole D3 library to get, you know, a yes. couple scales. Exactly. So if you see the imports here, um, well, this is a pattern that I've used over the years. It's like it is pulling in the whole D3 bundle, but we're doing the unpacking of the imports at the top. 
Um, and part of it is, it is also like I had, I had been doing client services for years leading up to teaching this course. And I had sort of gotten to know these certain patterns that worked for me and that I really preferred. Like I have a strong preference for unpacking all the imports at the top instead of saying D3 dot this and that. And so all these patterns that I sort of built up over the years from my client services work, I wanted to embed into my teaching and into the tools that I use for teaching. So that's sort of the origin story. So that's the 2018 version. There's a DataViz 2020 course on YouTube, which has got really popular. There, there I had a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's cool to see the evolution of of you and the interface both together. Oh, yeah. A crazy, funny rabbit hole. I lost a lot of weight at some point, And I, in some of my videos, I look super skinny. And now I gained a lot of weight and I look a little fat. <laughs> so it's like you can see my personal evolution over time as well. And this Everything is, cycles. in 2020, this is VizHub version 2. And we can see the UI here. I had hired um, Stamen Design to help me I did most of my client services work through Stamen as like a subcontractor for years. And I eventually hired Stamen to help me with the UI design. So this is version two. Uh, Alec Birch, great, amazing designer is Stamen. Oh yeah, Alec is awesome. Yeah. So he designed this interface. Um, and I went down a rabbit hole of custom uh, colors to optimize readability and get the contrast just right. So this is what version two looks like. And you did a whole new course on this new version. Yeah. Yeah. And this version supports React as well. So I got really into I got became it. I became um what you might call a React head. <laughs> right. <laughs> like my brain got poisoned by React. <laughs> and I'm like, React is the way. And I get you know, a lot of people get like that with different frameworks. Um sometimes well, especially so it can go good or bad because you have to do that with D three. Right. right. Like if you try and use D3 and try and introduce, like you have to like adhere to the religion. So some of the frameworks are like that. Like if you, if you don't stray, everything will go fine. Exactly. So here it is. See, like I'm, we're building up the, we're making a map with, with React. Are oh, you doing the JSX? And like so it's back. like, yeah, everything is in JSX. And I think I even went, made the classic mistake of like building my own axes <laughs> with React. Yeah. <laughs> In this course, and now I know better, but back in the day, it's like, we must do the React way. That's fun. So anyway, that's 2020. And then I I have all these new ideas have been stirring in my soul of like, we need to get the Brett Victor. Um, What's that? What's that video called? Yeah, I know. Inventing I know exactly on principle. About. So like, I want to manifest... Inventing on principle from Brett Victor. I agree. And so this is when I was super skinny. Ha! <laughs> this is the 2023, this last year's version. And I started narrowing in on the patterns that I wanted to use for the next major version of VizHub, which is all about this unidirectional data flow concept. And so here's one where like I built up a spinning globe. And uh, it's still using VizHub version 2, but it's using these patterns sort of like these Rosetta Stone uh, patterns that will enable hot reloading, which I think is sort of like a holy grail of uh, of DevX, developer experience, where when you make a change, yeah. it hot reloads. And if we could get that hot reloading like instantaneous and real-time collaborative, like that's where I wanted to get to, and that's where I finally la finally landed with VisHub version 3, and it's live, and it's working. So that's why I'm going to get a demo. Sweet. But this so it's got the, the the ability to like go in and change numbers in real time and move things around yeah. and not have to like save and exactly. refresh and all that. Exactly. And so this is the latest and greatest, which is currently being developed. I'm in the I'm in the dead center of my uh, what seventh or eighth time teaching this, and I'm doing all fresh videos on the latest version of VizHub. And we built up like a, a solar system. Which is super cool. I it's saw a, I saw some of your students dropping some cool versions of that. Oh in, yeah, in your course. Oh yeah, and this is a great segue. So there's what 19, 20 videos, twenty one videos here, 
and we're getting into responsive visualizations and I'll be making maybe 20 more in the next two two months or so and then um, VizHub and YouTube has sort of have sort of become interlinked too they really work well together so in YouTube I link to the Viz uh, a thing in VizHub is called a Viz by the way and here it is live and you can see forks and you can also star a viz and see who starred it but one of the coolest things is that you can see the forks and so this page shows all the forks oh that's really cool of that solar system and this was an assignment that I gave in this year's course and I'm like use SVG gradients or change it to visualize some other data and so you know so this is some student work where they made like stars and they used gradients and like they made a they made it look really i yeah. like the ones where they made it really different like it's like a super different form but with the right circles. see here's one where they visualized some other data and this is what i wanted to get at with this is like you could use circles to visualize data and they these are like what, a top five IDEs? VS Code, Visual Studio, IDEA, Notepad++. Plus Plus. <laughs> really? <laughs> Notepad++. Plus Plus. Uh, but anyway, it's super cool. And then you can go to someone's uh, profile page. And then in the profile page, all the works by that person are sort of collected. And I really like this one, which was <laughs> like the hello world of SVG. And my theory mm, is that oh. this level of detail was only possible due to the hot reloading. Because see what this is, how they did it. It's a bunch of data for each of these individual shapes. So let me actually fork this example and, and show you what I mean. So if I fork it, it says fork. Yeah, can we animate some of them? Yeah. Like, if I hold down Alt and drag one of these, it moves the thing in real time with hot reloading. Yeah, that's cool. And I had no idea that this would be the demo, but if I share this with you in uh, Discord, you can come in here, the chat, and thanks for sharing that link. Jo just so for anyone who is watching and doesn't know, yeah, I think it's super important to to pay homage to our to our roots, right? Like when yeah. I saw this video in like 2011, maybe or 2012, I don't know, 2012. Um, like yeah. me and Ian saw it, and we're like, "Oh, this is what I want to do." And like I've spent like the past 10 years trying to accomplish the things that Brett Victor called out, like in yeah. this video. So this is super super important to the work that I think all of us are doing. Exactly. He's got some really good examples of like where's that one with the yeah the one where he grows the tree is the put it right he like this one starts it from zero yeah yeah that's so funny this is also like one of the most influential things that it got me into like observable and like this sort of like literal programming stuff it made no a, such a huge difference yeah totally. Well, I think there's something about this, like, I don't know, he, like, raised the flag in a really effective way. Like, he, I, I've always, not only the, the content of what he's saying, but the delivery of it was so inspirational of, like, he really, like, made his point in such an exceptional way and made the prototypes to, like, prove it out, which, I don't know, I'm always inspired by that approach. Totally. So, like, the idea that he's showing here is, like, you can drag to change numbers, and you can get a color picker in your editor. And when you make the changes, it is instant. That was like the theme of this video. Instant feedback is a principle that he's trying to... Well, it's also hard to remember, like 10 years ago, you'd have to command S and it would save and you'd go to your browser and you hit command R and it would refresh for a second and you'd see your right. change and you did that like a million times a day right and that added right. up and it like oh yeah the difference between that and this was night and day and i think it's a little more commonplace now right to have things be more reactive but this was like he it's probably because of brett victor that that's the case right exactly yeah exactly so here's let's use this one this is a cool editor demo so i could say share 
collaborators. No, bring me back to the dolls. Oh, Stop you want to use the dolls? Go to the dolls. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's what are you do doing? The dolls. All right. So I can add specific people, like if I search for EJ. Um, yeah, I want a green doll. You're there. And I can actually open it up to anyone to edit. But this, this has bitten me in the butt because if I leave this on, you know, random people come in and start editing. Oh, look. Okay, is he's there? Sweet. How come my greens aren't greening? We got anonymous. You might not, not be logged in. Oh, I might in. be anonymous. Let me log in. Oh, and, and you have to Safari. hit... Um, you have to manually run it with um, Shift Enter or Control S, and that will trigger. trigger oh, okay, a... got it. That's what. Got it. All right, should be logged in now. Hey, there we go. Nice. Okay, we got so a green. Can I make a loop? Can I make like a timer loop that well, updates the ellipsis data? Um. Like, what are we in right now? Let Let's try asking the AI. Make. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a timer loop that changes ellipse data and actually let me move this down if you hold if you press down alt and down arrow it moves Whoa. it down that's pretty sick and so like, this is code mirror running under the hood yeah this is code mirror 6 and that was a big reason to rewrite the whole thing cuz like version 2 was on the old version of code mirror but code mirror 6 is way better so I redid all the real-time integrations and stuff on Code Mirror Six, which is sweet. It is absolutely yeah, sweet. Yeah, Code Mirror has a really nice ecosystem too of like helpful. Like I just saw Valtown released a few plugins like for um, yeah extending comments and things like that. So it's nice to live in that ecosystem where people are all making text editing on the web better together. Totally, and that's what enabled these um, integrations. Like, see, if I hold down Alt and I click on the color we get a color picker and you see that one thing over there is changing in real time as i as i change the color got it so if you do the alt click that gets you real time but otherwise it's shift enter correct yep alt shift on colors will do the real time updating and also alt drag on a, a number gives you the hot reloading and i made it I tried to make it as fast as possible. And if the code is simple and small, it does accurately reach like 60 frames a second, which is crazy. But as the... All right, well, speaking of 60 frames a second, I want to make me have the robot make me a loop. Yes. So here's a, a comment. And if I click on this Start AI Assist button, it will call out to GPT-4 and it writes code directly into this thing. And so it did it. And so it's going to change the data every second, but it's not going to actually... This is fun. Can I talk to the robot? Yeah, talk to him. Uh, make a looping timer using request animation frame that changes the CX of the... What are they called? Ellipses. Oh, nice. You were able to trigger it. That's great. Okay, cool. Not really. So, like, kind of. So, so are you? Is the AI that's the language model that's responding to EJ? Is it yours current? Like, is it running on your account or is it his account? Oh, it's my account. It's the VizHub account. It's um, it's using. Oh, let me turn my video back on. Oh, like the. Oh, it's the using. Platforms. Uh, it's using OpenAI's. API for GPT-4, and it's all running in the back end. Oh, okay. It's in the back end of VizHub, and so it's hooking into the real-time collaboration infrastructure as though it were a, another person in the session. And so when you click AI okay. Assist, it gives some information to the server of like, this is where the cursor is. Please fill in this stuff. Um, and all that prompt engineering is actually open source. And this whole editor itself is open source. It's called VZ Code. And I've been working with yeah, students um, to I mean, develop ho it. Ho ahead. Hopefully you don't mind, but like I'm, I'm comparing it to like observable, like in this case, observable requires you to like bring your own API key, but. Oh um, yeah. Visible right. Provides the backend, a language model like built in, right? Exactly. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's um it doesn't require that you bring your own API key. But it is a paid feature. So, um in January I launched this paid plan and the AI assisted coding is on the paid plan, which you get for, you know, $10 a month at the moment. Because I need to pay the I need to pay for the <laughs> generations, right? Uh, yeah. But you get unlimited generations and also private visits and unlimited real-time collaborators and larger limits on uploading data. That's what the paid plan is right now. Um, but I, I had thought about making like a limited number of generations free just so people can try it out. And, you know, the hot reloading is not perfect, so it, especially if you're doing animation stuff, um, we may need to do a hard refresh to get it to go. I think I broke everything, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> oh, crap. We might need to take a... I don't know what oh, I did. Oh, it did something. Yeah, is there an infinite they loop? They changed their mustache color. That's fun. <laughs> oh, no. Hope it doesn't break my whole streaming <laughs> setup. Is, is there an inf could be there an infinite loop in there? I don't know. Yeah, page on. Oh yeah, well I did make a I did do that request animation frame loop that goes over every shape. I, or yeah, so maybe. In theory, it should be fine, but I think we may have run into one of those cases where. Yeah, sorry about that. It breaks That's down. Okay. No, this is like a recurring issue, and students have faced this as well, and it actually crashed my server. Because if you have an infinite loop, like a while true, um, which can mm, happen. That makes sense. That's, that is what I just did. I made a loop, like an animation frame loop. I mean, the animation frame should be, like, debounced. Like, I don't think that would cause this crash. But if it's a synchronous loop somehow, or I don't know, maybe. Mm -hmm. just, let's wait. It's not. Anyway, I'm sorry for ruining the dolls. Uh... <laughs> It's all right. I think I'll just close this window. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably move the best along. course of action. Yeah. So some other things... I, I do want to experiment yeah. with how to do uh, animations, though, if you could show me the right pattern to do that, because that is... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, it harkens back to the um, the map we made. What is that? Open oceans or uh, hope in the open. Hope uh, yeah, the World Conservation Society, hope underwater. This is a yeah, good exactly. case study for VizHub because this code actually originated in VizHub. And by the way, there's a great shout out to uh, Room Three Hundred Two Studio. Yeah, this is Sam Vogt's design. Sam Vogt uh, and EJ and I worked on this project, which is for the and I always get the name wrong. World. So World World Conservation Society. I yeah. World Conservation Society. WCS. I know WCS. that for sure. It's about coral reefs. And uh, EJ did Yeah, so coral. they wanted to show the locations of a few coral reefs, and we had this really awesome spinning globe at the end of it. Yeah, so at it's the like bottom the here, kicker. there is a really yeah, cool... Yeah, exactly. Oh, the live streaming is a bit laggy, but it's cool nonetheless. You can get, you can see sort of it's like a sci fi vibe. Um, so you said, uh, Curran, that you had like a VizHub sketch before. Yeah, this. so this implementation was straight up lifted from uh, an implementation I did for my course, which is listed under the Create Viz page, um, which is another page I wanted to showcase. But this has the index of all the the things I made in my different courses, and one of those, actually, I, I hope it's in here, the spinning globe from 2023. Oh my gosh, did I miss well, a whole... You just added search though, right? Yeah, good call, <laughs> globe. <laughs> spinning globe, there it is. Spinning globe. And it's, this is a reason, I mean, I did a lot of different spinning examples, but this is the one. Listen, we're, we're always making spinning globes. Everybody yeah. wants a spinning globe. We'll like about every year, I come up with a whole new way of implementing spinning globes. Uh, but this is one of my course videos, and this is the pattern, the Rosetta Stone pattern, 
that makes um, interaction and animation, um, in theory, workable with sort of any framework. So in, in our case, we exported this into a Vue project and then invoked this exact code from Vue. And you could do the same. You could wrap it in a React component or a Svelte component or whatever framework comes along. And the pattern is you have a function that takes as input a DOM element, which is a container, and then these two things, state and set state. And this is inspired by React, but not dependent on React. And so state is, is like an object that keeps track of all your stuff, like the rotation, for example, and also the data. And WCS are actually really kind and let us open source this project. So yeah. I just sent you the view file if you want to, like, maybe want to look at how you moved it from oh, yeah. the sub to view. Oh, yeah. Because that's a huge part. Like, whenever I'm prototyping in a tool like this, there's always the portion where you're like, all right, now I want to use it for real. Right. Yes. So I, I was really delighted in the way that came together, like just the way you were able to just pull it and put it into view in a way that made sense. Yes, exactly. And I want to make that for what it's worth. That's what one of the frontiers of VizHub is. I want to make that super easy and straightforward to get things out of VizHub and into your real world projects. And um, what I did initially is I just clicked on the button that says export code and when I clicked on that it downloads a zip file with the source files and you can take a look I can take a quick look and see like it's just got the files you know as they are and I essentially dropped all these files into a subdirectory I think if that's how I did it uh, in this view project and it's like alright how do we set up a view uh, component that invokes this spinning globe. And we so we define state and set state in view using all the view ref infrastructure. And I have another example for React uh, because set state and state are totally compatible with um, the use state hook from React. So you can just wrap it in a use effect and then the viz becomes in a, a side effect essentially. But I, I digress. So it's like, a, I don't. Yeah, well, it's just you're. I understand half of that because I come from Vue, right? So it's like you're yeah. kind of like finding the Rosetta Stone to go between Vue and Svelte and React, like all in the same without. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Yeah. Is that right? No, that's exactly right. It is a it is a Rosetta Stone kind of a pattern that supports hot reloading critically, and it also supports um, different frameworks. I'm I'm trying to find the React. Here it is, VT3 template. And I did a video on this as well. And I think, oh, this one does not use React. But this is like a peek under the hood of what VizHub is doing internally. And so I want mm. I want to add uh, options to the export button that says like export as a vanilla JavaScript project. Yeah, I was going to, this is just vanilla JS. This is no yeah. framework at all. This is just you like handling your own state and rendering. Exactly. And it's like a dead simple, dead simple way yeah. of dealing <laughs> like, with state. Yeah, it's almost like too simple. It, I almost feel like, am I missing something here? Like people say it's a complex problem, but like, no, JavaScript super... rules. Yeah. We should be like, I, I keep talking about this. Like our tools have gotten really cool now. Like it's, it's kind of, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. And this is Vite and Vite, you know, if, in, yeah, Vite is just magic. in case you don't know anyone viewing, Vite is amazing, amazing uh, front end tooling that I use now for all my projects, and it's the basis for the Svelte starter, I believe. And it's you can have a, a a React project like this is the go to thing nowadays, and it used to be Create React app, and also Vue. I believe the Vue, all the Vue technology is built on on Vite. And I think Vite was created by yes. the same guy as they created Vite. Yeah, no, I, it's all in the same ecosystem. This is the same, back to our original, circling yeah. back on we were talking about, like, joining a religion, right? right. Part of, like, joining an ecosystem is really fun and interesting. Like, I think I've done that in Vue and Nuxt and Vue Use and Nuxt UI. And, like, there's this whole world of people. I just like the way those people work together so much better than the way React devs work and yeah. think in their community and i was just like a different kind of vibe and sense there and like like it just i feel like the people making it care about me as a developer like they want you know what i mean i don't know there's something 
There's mm-hmm. just a different approach based based around joy, where I think joy is more like, yeah, let's get hot reloading. Let's make it really easy to plug things in, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. And Vite does support hot reloading. So back to this example, this is the implementation of set, state, and state. And it's super simple. It just passes the previous state, and you use immutable update patterns to cr- produce the new state. And this here, right here, hooks it into Vite's hot reloading. So all the code you write in VizHub when you export it will literally work out of the box. I mean, that's the vision. Um, right now, there's a little legwork you have to do. But the templates are there. Um, I need to document them better. But it's all it's all working in a Rosetta Stone kind of way. And, and so, then how much of it is open source? Like, say if I really wanted to get, like, a view part of the Rosetta Stone working, is that a, is there a place in GitHub where I can contribute that? Is that part, like, closed source and then the editor is open? I, I don't fully understand, like, what, what parts yeah. of BizHub are open source and aren't. Yeah, totally. The editor is open source, and it's called VZ Code, which is kind of a play on VS Code, but VZ because it's, like, Viz. Viz Code. Love it. <laughs> This code. That's what uh, you should call it. It's like SQL. Yeah, exactly. So it's VZ code, and uh, I have this amazing relationship with um, RPI in Troy, New York, where these students are part of this open source course each semester, and they work on this as their uh, class project. And so there's all these contributions from these amazing students. I mean, there's been a ton of work that goes into this. So yeah, my strategy, my like open source strategy is that, uh, which is quite different from some other products, by the way, is that the editor, the thing that you use to author the code is open source. But the runtime environment that makes this code actually run in the browser with hot reloading, that part is closed source. However, Got it. it is compatible with Vite. It's inspired by Vite. It's almost like a browser-based version of Vite mm. uh, that I've sort of built up over time. But it has some additional features, like importing across vises, um, which I'll get to in a second. But I just want to close up this thought. Whereas, you know, if you export code out of here, you can export it to a Vite project that supports hot reloading that would look like this. So it would be like this template plus the source code of whatever viz you're exporting. And then here's the React template. And see, I started thinking about all this two years ago. And um, if you see the app, or no, okay, app is just this, and there's a thing called viz, uppercase V, and ah, here it is, the beauty, the simple beauty of this. This is what the wrapper would look like for React. That would let you call the viz function that you define in VizHub today with vanilla JavaScript. So it's a ref to keep track of the DOM element. It's a set state and state, just use state, initialized to an empty object. And then it's just a side effect. Interesting. You know, and this all works. And it supports hot reloading because this project is built with Vite. And Vite React has a specific integration that enables hot reloading for React. And so this is cool. And then finally, circling back to what brought this up is the view integration. Mm. And so maybe you could narrate what this does. It uses a ref, which is views reactive. Yeah, mechanism. that's views reactive. So yeah, anytime you change the value of that ref, uh, you the, the DOM updates or any of the subcomponents update without you having to define it. So like, I think you just like translate your set state into the ref, mm-hmm. essentially. And yeah, we define, I don't know what the emit is about. But... Oh, we, we wanted to get interaction to surface out of here. There's something unrelated. Right, because it has a box that labels what's being shown on the globe. Right, so yeah, you yeah. need to uh, emit the currently shown things data so that you can render your little table underneath your globe. Right, and this is a perfect use so case, it, you know, where you can use yeah, the em- vanilla emits code. What it's looking at. Yeah, and whenever this, whenever this specific value on the state changes, it will emit a view event, which you can integrate with the other view components. And then, 
oh, we wanted to move, we moved some computation into this Yeah, level. just unload, it finds the centroids and They're like rotating. gives the globe what it needs exactly. It's rotate amount. Yeah. I'm looking for the thing that calls the actual viz function. Or maybe it's all just right here. Well, I don't it's know. all just reactivity in the ref, like because in globe we're Oh, being it's reactive a globe. to whatever the state is. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. it's here. Exactly. This is it. I think we went through a number of refactorings on this one. This was a great like proof of concept, in my mind at least, for the um, the vi validity of this approach for supporting different Oh frameworks. yeah, you do it once by hand and then figure out how to automate it. Show the robot this example and Exactly, like, do, but do more of this. check it out. Here's the lowercase g globe component, which is the exact code exported out of VizHub, and it works. See, container, Yeah, state, you're just modifying state. yeah, and it uses D3 for the DOM manipulation. So the overall vision is that you can use VizHub as a collaborative editor with AI and the ability to import across vizs and like to iterate fast and with the hot reloading use it as an editor for just the small pieces of your project that have data viz in them such as the um, spinny globe part of that uh, wcs project So how do I do an animation? Oh yeah, well the spinning globe has that. It's just um, animate with request animation frame, and on e every um, animation frame, you just call set state with an updated version of the state. Mm. But the trick is to kick off this loop only once, and so it's not. Ah, that's the that's the piece that made everything go haywire before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, honestly, this is something I have yet to fully work out. I mean, I have faith that it will work out, but I want really robust patterns for doing animation so that you can change something inside of this loop, and it will work with hot reloading. Like, this pattern here doesn't do that. Yeah, see, that's what I want is I want Yeah. to like play around with Yeah. um animations where i'm like tweaking the variables Exactly. or like uh, maybe another thing i do a lot is like force layouts right Oh, where yeah. i'm tweaking the parameters of the force layout i don't know if you have examples Exactly. of that but that's like another place where i want hot reload a lot Oh, yeah. I can't wait to do that. I mean, that's... I'm, I'm planning on doing that for my course this year is to, like, take one of these uh, force-directed graphs. And I, I'm so thrilled that search is working now. You could search for things and yeah this is awesome you can find things. But, like, yeah, some people over the years have done really nice work in here. It's amazing. Totally amazing. And you can embed, which is fairly new. Let me just quickly show that. And this is for, like, I'm imagining use cases where people have, like, a CMS, like a WordPress blog. Oh, <laughs> by the way, sneak peek. I'm developing CurrenKelleher.com. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Finally <laughs> nice. making a portfolio site. But um, That's awesome. I was testing out the embed here. And it seems to work. Like responsive bar chart. This is a WordPress page. And the embed is here. And it works. And it's responsive Sweet. too. So like if I make it small. And you were saying that the data updates as well, right? Like if I went in and updated the data for that embed, it would update all the embeds as well. Yes, that's exactly right. Let me show you how that would play out. So this is a branded embed. I can link, I, I can click through and go to the actual viz, which is this bar chart here. And it's responsive and you can open it full screen and you can respond to resize. This is something that version two of VizHub did not have, by the way. So you can do like really responsive That's cool. stuff. But the way that the, it imports the data, yeah, check this out. 
um, it imports these responsive axes from a different viz, and at the top level, it imports from it, it imports the data from a different viz. This and, and and this is a I think a killer feature that I I have yet to see you know have it fully realized. And once we have organizations, it's going to be amazing. But I can import from yeah, and I want to visualize the graph now. Like oh I my god, see the yeah. Meta dependencies too. Yeah, we got to keep track of which viz imports from which ones, and then like, <laughs> yeah. So I want to be able to go to this. I need to make this clickable too, so you can quickly. Yeah, in VS Code, you would option click, and yeah. it would take you to that. Yeah, we got to right? get that going in here. That'd be sweet, and it's not too far off. Um, that that would be possible. But this is one reason that the runtime environment is closed source because it has to hook into a lot of things. Um, so if I we go... should do a whole hour where you teach us about Code Mirror and how to oh, like yeah. go in and make modifications to Code Mirror because I I feel like it's such a useful tool and like what what you're describing like it's such a cool idea like having being able to have an idea around the way you use your editor and implement it really quickly is really interesting to me. Oh, yeah, and I, I can't yeah, tell you. Really yeah, I can't tell you how pleased I am that I did. I went, I bite the bullet and, and did the refactoring because, and because and, it is so easy now to iterate and add new features. And there's a great ecosystem around code mirror six. And this is the open source piece of it. And I wanted to just show you this one file called, uh, get or create editor, which has all the code mirror integration in it. And this is totally open source and, um, it supports Svelte which is huge and we got uh, Matthias Stahl using it and it's amazing I got to yeah, show you gotta some do, of that. you gotta what do I gotta do to get view in there man yeah so I'll that's the next step just, just teach me how yeah oh my god let's open an issue right now view support yeah uh, there might already be an issue because it's on the roadmap like I want to do it I will do it I just don't know how I will assign this to you, EJ. <laughs> I don't know how. Come on, figure it out. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if you wanted to like uh, move to an, an, another topic, but like, uh, what I was wondering is since you're uh, making a lot of this open source, like, uh, like what's your experience so far, like managing this big open source project, right? Because you have like students. Coming in, and presumably some of them want to like participate in improving this. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a, it is kind of a lot of overhead, but it's it's great because I have actually I, I don't know I've worked in client services a lot with different teams, and I have a, I have kind of a sense of of how to manage projects, and um, it it what the one thing that makes it a little tricky is that these students are mostly totally new to JavaScript, <laughs> so they're sort of going into the deep end. But yeah, yeah. Um, the way I do it is I have this Kanban board where I go, I go through and prioritize all the issues. And then I ask the students to self-assign to see what they're interested in. And then twice a week, we meet all together. Um, and we, we review pull requests. We do stand-ups. We do like almost like scrum kind of thing. We use Discord. Yeah, yeah. And it's so in like, the, uh, it's like in the, would be in like a real, like a real team. Yeah. I manage, I pretend like, you know, it's a real team with like full-time employees, but they're students. So they're kind of chill. Everything is chill. Like there's no pressure. I'm yeah, like, yeah. work on it. If no, you've... but that's so invaluable. Yeah. As someone who hires people, like yeah. that's like, I feel like I think they don't teach, like they can all do these crazy like code exercises. You know what I mean? Interview questions, but like. Yep when to do a poll review or like how to like self assign a ticket like that's what really is helpful to actually do this work i think so that's really cool oh yeah and they're right. they're like, learning a lot terms and stuff. they're learning a lot too it's like a, it's i think it's a win win like i just did a pair programming session with someone yesterday in fact where we solved an issue and i'm he was like i don't want to commit my changes they're not done and i don't know if they're like acceptable and i'm like dude chill out just like Commit yeah, whatever changes that's the you name made. Of the game. Commit whatever changes you made. Pull it, make a draft pull request. Oh, you don't know what that is? Okay, well, that's just when I can see work in progress to advise on the direction. You know, <laughs> things like conversations like that. And then uh, yeah, that's sick. Wait, uh, so like, yeah. how, how how do you get your students or like? It's this thing called um, Arcos. 
at RPI where I have this great relationship with the professor that runs this um, program. It's a course. Oh, let's see, and they build all their own tools, <laughs> which maybe is why it's down at the moment. But uh, Wait, so like people, it'd be in their, like your courses, right? For this, so it's like freshman, sophomore. It's like undergrad students that enroll in this course for credit, and the course is work on an open source project. And last semester there was like um, three hundred students and about fifty projects going on at the same time in, in parallel and the discord for this thing is insane it's it's crazy busy and they have external cool. partners and and people come from like ibm to like have students work with them on their open source cloud infrastructure things and then half of it is like cool. random tiny little student ideas they're like let's make something new um and there's one cool project with like a bus tracker i wish i could show some of it but um they're great people and I have to pitch every semester where I go give a presentation. I go to RPI in person. I get up on the stage in front of people. I'm like, visualization is cool, man. And, and like do a whole performance and try to win them over. And then they have to opt to work with me <laughs> instead of someone else. But this semester I got like 12 students working with me, which is crazy. And half of them don't know JavaScript. So I'm like, okay, guys, let's like pair up. You know, the person that doesn't know pairs up with the person that knows and it really improves yeah, the... that's crazy so they got they got super lucky like working with you because you're like really you're like really going through like a real like oh know, yeah oh yeah it's real, real. and it, it's it's become a serious mature project now which i <laughs> I, it's, I mean i've been working on it for a couple of years now but like here's a perfect example let me show you one just quickly um, I wanted to have it automatically run prettier after the AI generation finishes. Because that was a usability issue. And I worked with a student. We did pair programming for like an hour yesterday and figured out how to expose, you know, React details, but how to expose the prettier function to the AI widget to get it to run. And at the end of it, he was like, Dude, you just totally blew my mind. I learned like so many things right right now. Like, thank you so much. <laughs> so that's sort of how that goes. That's awesome. And are you like you don't capture that though? Like, that's not live streamed or anything. Well, I did live stream a couple of them, um, and okay, I have cool. thought about doing that. I should do that. I should do that more often. Um, but I never know how it's going to go, you know. And there's like privacy, student privacy issues. But I did live well, stream. Ask. I, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get into the habit of recording everything, right? Like we're right. that's what we're doing right now. Where you never know when that magical moment will happen, but if you just have a there, there's something special to that, and I think it helps people who who are learning understand really well is when they see like actual moment, like not like play educational moments, but like actual yeah. moments of progress. And you know what I mean? Like right. there's some energy there that that really helps. I think. See, here's one where I was working with a... I think that's it. I think this is one where I was working with a student and we did uh, some peer programming. Yeah, like this is the... I did, I did live stream like when we started the project and it's crazy to look back and see how far we've come. Like this is, this is the... Um, where it started back when I was still using Vim and not VS Code. <laughs> So yeah, it's come a long way. But EJ, I want to answer your other question about the data. And so the bar chart, this this bar chart here, check it out. I'm going to open this. In oh, yeah, I was wondering, so if I update the data in one place, like if I have an embed, like say I want to like put a mood embed on my home page and then on some other thing. And then like if I like update my mood, will update all the embeds downstream automatically, essentially. Right. Or like health data or elections data or whatever, anything that like changes that I want to have the same visual for. Yeah, totally. This is the viz in viz hub that's being embedded there. And this is the other viz in viz hub. It's a totally other thing that holds the data. And it's imported like this, import data from dot slash data dot CSV, which is a cool pattern, I think. Uh, and so it hooks up with the bundler system. You don't have to do fetching. 
it simplifies things and it also supports hot reloading. So check this out. If I go in and just temporarily change the value of India, let me see which column, and the population is what, 14? That, that could be it. So if I add another zero. Yeah, it should pop way out. It right? should pop up. If I refresh, it does. Okay, okay. Well, that's, Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's supposed to happen that's in sick. real time. It happens in real time. It should be. Oh, okay. Well, you're, of course, you want it to do more, but that's that's all I was expecting is that it would. Oh yeah, I, so update. yeah, definitely, it definitely gets the latest thing if you refresh, because every time it refreshes, it actually does the import and calculates everything, pull, pulls it all the way through. Um, it's but you're bad. saying in the future it would go even go even deeper and be able to do it, like. Yeah, when and you even save, I, I it even updates the embed. Yes. Exactly. And I got that working at some point. I got to go back and check what's going on with that. It just could be, it could be just a, a, a triggering issue. Maybe it's not like, let me try one last thing. So India, if I change that number. Cool. I just looked at the clock. We got five minutes left and we have some people in the chat. I just want to open oh, it yeah. up. I've been just kind of monopolizing on the time if anybody has any questions or things Good they want to talk about. Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to jump in and say uh, thank you so much to the whole VizHub community and especially to you, Kern, for uh, being so instructive to me um, at the beginning of my coding journey. Oh, thank you so much. I, I love hearing that. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was... Um... Did I do that, the clapping, or did you... I'm new to this. Someone did. I don't know. Uh, no, <laughs> <That's amazing>. Discord. <laughs> the Discord. Sorry, Can you share your profile? We'd love to see it. I mean, I think I've seen your stuff. I definitely have seen your stuff. Um, oh, the the link to the VizHub? Yeah. yeah or, or just spell it for me. What is your uh, profile name there? Oh, yeah. Adventures in English. Yes, dude. I have been following your work, to be honest. It Thank is cool. You, Thanks. I really appreciate it. Yeah, the the VizHub platform, um, it was like my first uh, like coding environment outside of like Free Code Academy, and uh, it it just made so many concepts click, and it was just so much fun to um, get my hands dirty in there. So thanks so much. Unfortunately, I need to leave. Uh, I'm, I'm actually about to teach an English class right now, so I have to leave now. Well, thanks for joining. So, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, it was really awesome. Please feel yeah. welcome to come through again, and thanks for bringing the positive energy. I really appreciate that. You got it, EJ. Thanks, everybody. See you thank you. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Oh, that's amazing. That's, that's cool. Way to, make, way to make things that have impact. Yeah, right? I, I love that. Well, that's the sickest have have real people have real usage of it that's cool yeah that's fantastic let's go through his stuff now that he's gone <laughs> right <laughs> he's got some great stuff and uh, uh, i just on? love hearing that he's got some cool like what does it say lasso i wanted to just highlight real quick um two people there's matthias stahl who is doing some amazing work with svelte and he's, I think, using it as part of his course on Svelte and D3. He's a well-known, um, you know, data visualization. What's that? He does amazing work. Yes. It's incredible. And he, he's pushed me, actually, to make a lot of the features, like the full screen feature and the Svelte support, which is fed into the embedding work. So shout out to Matthias. This is amazing stuff. And uh, my hope is that he can use it for his actual work he works for der spiegel which is a, a newspaper in germany can we and, look at the svelte d3 starter on his yeah. page i'm just curious like what what that's like he has like an even simpler one i think with with circles maybe yeah i'm following the forks back you in this you can follow the forks back oh okay yeah yeah yeah. exactly that was the one I was and this about. is the oh it's brilliantly simple This is wild. So there was some plumbing that we had to figure out at the top level, but this is, um, it's actually invoking the Svelte runtime environment from my vanilla JavaScript Rosetta Stone thing, which you could potentially wrap in a view component or a React component. So this is like cross, 
cross framework uh, stuff. But this yeah, is we've got to teach the robot how to translate it in and out, and then we are right. free of 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 being locked in any framework ever again. Exactly. And the AI, I think, knows Svelte, so you could you know ask the AI to do things in here too. It'd be pretty sweet. All right, we're at time. Is there anything else that you want to go over? Anything? Any other questions? That's about it. This was really cool, really helpful, really inspirational. And I want to, I like how editable it is. Like, I really want to start getting into VZ code and sort of adding more prototyping tools there. I think there's a lot of like ways in which we can, I don't know. It, I like the ecosystem that you're building a lot. Amazing. Well, thank you so yeah, much, dude, EJ. Yeah, no, this is, it, it's sick, dude. Like, you're, you're doing like really crazy stuff. I'm really thrilled about it, and uh, I, you're I doing wanna... by yourself what a lot of like companies full of engineers are struggling to do. So I think that's a really impressive feat. Yeah, for real, dude. Sick. Thank you so much, and I still feel like it's just getting started. I mean, there's so many things I want to do with the revision history and like API access, different export options. Uh, adding voice chat to the platform, like there's so. We're many... gonna have to do another stream where we like. That was like all that made me have a million ideas, and I would love to like tr yeah. learn how to. If you could teach me how to add a plugin or like add yeah. an add on or something like that, that would be really cool. Totally amazing. Cool. Well, well thank you so much for uh, driving the stream and all that. That's really, I appreciate it. it makes my life very easy. My pleasure. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Hope you all enjoyed it. Take care. Bye, everybody. Have a good week.